Hey, how you doing? Today we're going to start a project that I would consider to be the ultimate man project. I'm going to build a pool table. Now you may ask yourself, why on earth would you want to endeavor such a project when there are plenty of perfectly good tables on the market currently? Well, I looked at a lot of those tables and to be quite honest with you, I didn't care for how any of them would fit in this space. And I certainly didn't care for the price tag that was on any of them either. Now I happen to be a pretty frugal guy and I also happen to be fairly particular. So I decided I would go ahead and build my own pool table. And I figured out a way to do it that won't break the bank. Now, I'm not just going to build a cheap pool table just for the sake of building a table. I'm going to build a quality slate pool table for a reasonable amount of money. Now, I'm going to walk you through the entire design process. I'm going to show you the complete construction process. Started from milling the lumber to getting it built, set in place, leveled, covered, ready to play. Along the way, we should have some fun. And when we're done, I should have a good quality pool table that not only looks good, it will play awesome. And most importantly, I got the pride and satisfaction of knowing I did it myself. Stick around, it should be fun. All right, a few months ago I decided I wanted a pool table, but one really wasn't in the budget. So I kind of figured that I could build one myself without spending a whole lot of money. Um, well, it didn't take me long to figure out that by the time I bought all the parts and pieces, I was going to end up spending a lot more money than I wanted to. So I spent some time on Craigslist and I was searching for a donor table. And eventually I found this one. I bought it for $400 and I think it got a pretty fair deal. My plan was to play on it for a while and then at a later date rebuild it. Um, but, you know, time passed and things changed, and I really did enjoy practicing on it, even though it didn't play particularly well. It was slow, the pockets were large and very forgiving, so I decided to make a few modifications. I uh, tightened the pockets up, I recovered it with the best cloth available, and right now it plays pretty well, and I'm enjoying it. But I still got a few problems. Uh, it's too big for this space. Ideally, I'd love to have a 9-foot pool table, but I just don't have room for that. I don't have room for this one, and this is an 8-footer. Furthermore, as you can tell by looking at this space, I love knotty pine. And this pool table is not knotty pine. It is cheap photo engraved laminate. In fact, I'm not even sure why they call it engraving because there's really no engraving involved. It is just a picture glued to wood, in this case, poplar and particle board. But either way, it's cheap. Anyway, I was, you know, at this point, I was content. I had a table that played decent and I was content. But then something happened. I was in my uh, local billiard supply store and I was talking with the owner about the thoughts on building a pool table and he ended up making me an offer that I couldn't refuse and I didn't. He offered to sell me three pieces of one and a quarter inch slate from a seven foot pool table for $150. Now I don't know if you've been pricing slate but this slate would probably cost in excess of $500 plus another couple hundred in shipping just to get it. So needless to say I took it home. Now when I got it home I measured it up and I started the design process. Now I think I've engineered a design that will work pretty well and I designed it around the tools that I have available to me in my shop. So let's get out there and get started and hopefully we'll prove that my uh, engineering to be sound. Engineering. Is there something about the engineering and the Titanic? All right, I got my lumber here. I'm ready to get it down to thickness. I got this at the Home Depot and I spent a lot of time, I think I went through a whole pallet of 2x10s to find the best ones that they had and I think I did a pretty good job. Um, the thing about framing lumber, you don't want to buy it until you're ready to use it because once you buy it and you get it in your shop, if you let it sit, chances are it's going to warp even more. So if you, if you buy it, use it, assemble it into what you want, you should have no issues whatsoever. 
All right, the first thing we want to do is get them planed down to thickness. I'm going to do that on the planer. Uh, my target dimension is one and three eighths of an inch. I will do a couple passes on one side. I'll flip it over and do a couple passes on the other side. It's probably going to take me eight or ten passes to do this, and it should take a while, and it'll probably be kind of boring, but hey, if you like that sort of thing, more power to you. Let's get to it. <laughs> All right, let's see how we did. I'm close. Looks like I'm about a 64th to a 32nd of an inch short of my 1 and 3 eighths target dimension. But that's okay. The key dimension is the width and length of the frame. These legs attach to the frame, so it shouldn't be a big deal. It just would have been kind of nice. Okay, so we're going to uh, joint one edge of each of these boards. I don't happen to have a jointer. Yeah, I know. But I do have a router table, and that will do the job just fine once I'm done with that. I will then go ahead and get them to the table saw and trim, it down, trim them down to the final dimension. All right, I got my router table all set up for jointing operations and we might have to make a few passes on each edge, but that's okay. <laughs> That was fun. All right, I need to take a look at the plan. So I know what I'm doing with that lumber and then we're gonna start cutting. All right, this is the design I used. I used a tool called Google SketchUp to do this. And SketchUp is great. It allows you to do a virtual prototyping. It allows you to actually build it on paper, if you will and see how you got everything going and it just works great i love it it's been it's free you can download it from google and there's a pro version i'm not really sure what a pro version does but the free version works just fine for my purposes so the legs we need to cut some lumber for the legs so let's move a leg out and actually see what it looks like As you can see, the legs are made up of an L bracket on the outside, and the inner portions are made up of just laminations, and this is obviously our framing lumber. So we need a couple pieces. We need For each leg, we need a couple pieces that are, I believe, 26 and 3 quarters. And then for the inner pieces, we need about 18 and 3 quarters. For the one outside piece, we need a piece that's 8 inches wide, and this piece is 7 and a half inches wide to accommodate our rabbit we'll end up with an eight inch square leg. Now the laminations here, I'm gonna cover with a thin layer of veneer. Which you can actually see if we zoom in closer. And while we're here, I'll show you the, I'll show you the, how the frame looks. Hide those. Frame consists of a box, legs attached to the box, and then on top of the frame is a subframe made out of poplar. Frame is consisted of plywood blocks and 
so on and so forth, and that's how it's constructed. And it should work out very, very well. It's going to be very strong and very stable. All right, I got lumber for four legs. Now it's time to some milling for some joints and then start assembly. All right, now it's time to, uh, we got to mill a rabbit in each of the four legs. So I'm going to make the vertical cut first. Now to readjust and we will do this cut. And that should be just shy of one and three eighths inches minus an eighth of an inch. Right or just shy of one and a half. Should be. I am that good. Looks pretty good. Saw the blade just a hair high, so I'm gonna drop it a smidge. That looks pretty good. One quick check. Beautiful. Just like that, that'll make a good solid joint. All right, now it's time to cut the, cut the board to the final thickness. We know the thickness of the legs is eight inches. So I set my fence to eight inches and we'll run them through. jointed edge which is going to go in the joint and we also want this dimension to be eight inches so we should be cutting this board at seven and a half let's uh, see how good we did seven and a half Now, as you can see, we got the makings of a leg. Now, what we want to do is we want to start trimming our inner leg pieces down to size. Now, it's a lot of cutting. I've got to cut all these here, and it's going to take me a while. So, I'm going to do that, and we, when I get done with this, we'll start actually doing some glue up.